Let's move on now. In a shocking stand, the government has said that marital rape cannot be considered as an act of crime as marriage is treated as sacred in Indian culture. Further cementing the government's view, Minister of State for Home Haribhai Chaudhary said in the parliament that there is no proposal to bring any amendment to the law for criminalizing marital rape. He was replying to a written question by DMK MP Kannimuri in Rajya Sabha. Now Kannimuri even quoted the United Nations statistics by saying that 75% of the married women in India were subjected to marital rape. Despite Law Commission's recommendation in 2000 and Justice Verma panel's report in 2013, marital rape continues to be unrecognized by law. And for more on this story, let's uh, quickly cut across live now to uh, Karuna Nandi, who joins us. Uh, she's an advocate in the Supreme Court. Morning, Karuna. Uh, how do you look at this particular position of, uh, you know, of the government? I think it's a, it's a travesty of justice, right? Because it seems to me that the government is saying three things. One, that there are certain rapes, that there are some rapes that are secret, even. There are some rapes that are in our cultural and religious fabric. I mean, with the greatest respect, this is, uh, you know, the statement from the Home Ministry that represents us is, um, is deeply problematic, you know, because um, how can one rape be okay and another rape not? Mm. How can, just because somebody is married, this means that there is, you know, you don't consent to being stabbed, you don't consent to being killed, you don't consent to being beaten. Why should you consent to being raped? Um, I think there's a sort of level of patriarchy there that really, really is very urgent that it be removed because there are various statistics ranging from 75% to about uh, over 90% of uh, that, that, you know, that is the proportion of rapes that are within marriage. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. and so rapes are not just like a stranger on the street. These are this is this is where it happens. Um, and you know, the second sort of bizarre anomaly that the recent amendments and the laws have thrown up, particularly since 2013, is that if there is a 17-year-old, for instance, that is raped by her husband, because of course, even though the legal age of marriage is 18. Um, if you are sort of married at between 15 and um, 15 and 18, then that marriage is uh, avoidable, which means it uh, it can be set aside at the option of either party. But at the same time, if the woman is attacked by her husband or raped by her husband, mm -hmm. that will be perfectly legal. But if she makes has consensual sex, sexual intercourse or makes love to another 17-year-old, then the boy 17-year-old will go to jail, um, an adult jail under the new juvenile justice laws. So I think there's a level of lack of thought that has gone into these criminal laws. Mm -hmm. It doesn't protect the victim <coughs> and it um, criminalizes the wrong perpetrator. Okay, Karuna, but as, as a follow-up, what do you think needs to be done now? Of course, the government has taken its position as far as marital rape is concerned. But what's the way forward legally? Uh, Perhaps uh, what's the responsibility of the civil society, lawyers or advocates like you? How can, how can uh, you know, the society or the community impress upon the government uh, to make them realize that, uh, you know, there is a section which does not agree with their assessment? Well, a number of things. I think that this is something that is such a travesty that... Um, you know, you all in the media really need to sort of keep taking it up. That's one thing. In terms of what lawyers can do, lawyers can keep taking this issue to the various high courts around the country. Um, you know, the thing to remember is that state governments actually have jurisdiction to um, strike down criminal provisions and pass legislation to change such criminal mm -hmm. provisions. So, you know, the DMK has been pl playing a very, very progressive and responsible role um, in this area. So in the area of rights for transgenders, for instance, in the area of marital rape, uh, it was Ms. Karni Modi from the DMK that raised the question. So, I mean, in Tamil Nadu, they can push for that. But also, I feel that the national parties need to make their stand clear, um, the ones in opposition. So the Congress needs to, like Mr. Gandhi, Rahul Gandhi has been speaking a lot on various issues. And the UPA government in 2013 um, had not permitted marital rape to be um, 
um, struck down as an exception. And I think this is something that now needs to be clear as a stand across the opposition. And there needs to be legislation. And in uh, 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 states where the Congress is in power, marital rape needs to be, be removed. As so you're, you're basic, Karuna, basically what you're saying that it all boils down to political will. I mean, it's easy to take positions, political positions, but it's about political will and actually actually implementing things on the ground. Like you mentioned, if Congress is, uh, you know, against this particular decision of the government, then they could start by implementing this in their respective states. Well, we need to hear from Congress, to be honest, mm. because in 2013, when the criminal law amendment bill was passed, we didn't hear any strong voices against marital rape. So we need to hear what the Congress thinks now. Have they changed their mind? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think it's possible that they've changed their mind, so we need to find out. Okay. Okay, Karuna, uh, many thanks for joining us at this moment and giving us some perspective uh, uh, on this particular story, marital rape uh, and the surprising position that the government has actually taken on marital rape.